what do you think they will be answering? Maybe if you will be talking with the one in politics, they will say, the greatest event is when we got the democracy in this country. Or maybe some will say that some Christians, on the other hand, might say that when the world was created, or maybe some will say when, when I had this very beautiful house, for him that is already the greatest event. <laughs> Marami po. There, there are lots of answers from all walks of life. You'll be hearing what is the greatest event in their lives. Though the greatest event that happened in my life is when I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Not my birth, but my spiritual birth. Not my physical birth, but my spiritual birth. That is the most greatest, not just most, but the greatest event that happened in my life. Without the resurrection, many events would not have taken place. Many events would not have taken place. And Jesus is the only one who resurrected from the grave, lived a pure holy life, and who showed miracles while he was still here on earth. What does it mean, well, maybe you'll be asking, what does it mean by living a pure holy life? What does it mean by living a pure holy life? Maybe some will say, by doing good things, or not oppressing other people, or not stepping on their knees, on their toes, or treating them fairly. Maybe that's how you will be saying, living a pure holy life. But the pure holy life can only be attained in Jesus. Because every, everyone here, we are all sinners and we have fell short in the glory of God. We have fell short. Hindi po tayo nakaabot sa kaluwalhatian ng Panginoon. Lahat po tayo ay makasalanan. Ngunit si Kristo lang, it's only Jesus who lived a pure and holy life. Amen. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 12 to 17. But if it is preached that Christ has been raised from the dead, uh, <laughs> how how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless, and so is your faith. More than that, we are then found to be false witnesses about God, for we have testified about God that He raised Christ from the dead. But He did not raise Him if, in fact, the dead are not raised. So, we can see in that, uh, we can see... From that passage, from the 12 to 17 verses, if there is no resurrection of the dead, firstly is not even Christ has been raised. Not even Christ has been raised. That is in verse 13. That Christ has been raised from the dead. How can some of you say that there is no resurrection? If there's the resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. So you do not believe in resurrection. So it means to say that you do not believe that Christ rose from the dead. Don't poop upon tayon. It will boil down to that if you do not believe in the resurrection. And secondly, if there is no resurrection of the dead, our preaching is useless. Our preaching is useless. Why, we, why do we need to, to share the Word of God? Why do we evangelize if we do not believe that our Creator Himself resurrected? Amen? Our preaching is useless. Thirdly, that is in verse 14. Huh? Take note. The second one is in verse 14. And another one in verse 14 is our faith is useless. We say that we are Christians. That is our faith. We have faith in Jesus. So, 
if we have faith in Jesus, we should be also believing that He resurrected. So, we are false witnesses of Jesus' resurrection if we do not believe in resurrection. Mga peki pala tayo dito. We are fake witnesses pala kung hindi tayo naniniwala. If we do not believe that Jesus resurrected, we are fake Christians. We are not uh, true witnesses. We are false witnesses. Fifth one is, we are still in our sins. If there is no resurrection, we are still in our sins. Up to this time, we are still committing those sins. We enjoy doing those sins. Because we don't have, we, we don't fear anyone as if we are already at the top. We don't have God. We don't have Jesus. As if we are the God of ourselves. So, means to say we are, we are still in our sins. And the sixth one is, we still carry the guilt, of con- the guilt and condemnation of sin. We still carry the guilt and condemnation of sin if there is no resurrection of the dead. You will always feel, oh, guilty yata ako. Ako yata may kasalanan. I may be the one who, who, who committed the crime or who committed the sin. You're always guilty. Parang as if you don't believe that when you come to Christ, ask for forgiveness, He will be forgiving you. As if you don't believe in that. If you don't believe in the resurrection of Christ. Amen? And if there's no resurrection of the dead, those who have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. Intermission daw na. Thank you, Sister Tess. Amen. Amen. Shaking crab time, Amya. <laughs> Amen. So, if Going to uh, continue, if there is no resurrection of the dead, those who have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. That's already in verse 18, medyo na, na, hindi po nahagip. So, those who have fallen asleep, those who, who accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior, and then they have fallen asleep, meaning to say, their physical uh, life ended, but they are reserved for heaven. That's what it means. So, if you do not believe in the resurrection, meaning to say, those who have fallen asleep are lost. What will happen to them? Right? They're all interconnected. All of these, these seven things that I uh, just enumerated, they are all interconnected in this passage that if there is no resurrection of the dead. And also, there are many theories were spreading just to discredit the resurrection. There are so many theories. Ewan ko, I, I don't know whose pakana is these theories. Maybe uh, gusto lang ng publication or he just needs uh, uh, yeah, he just needs mileage, media mileage why he was saying that he discredits the resurrection by putting up these theories. The first theory is the stone was rolled away theory. The stone was rolled away theory. Yeah, the stone was really rolled away. But the angel is the one who rolled away the stone. It is the angel who rolled away the stone, not the disciples. Because they were saying that it is the disciples who rolled away the stone and stole the body of Jesus from the tomb. Yun po ang pakana nila. That's, that's their, uh, uh, what they call this, that's their uh, uh, scheme that 
the stone was rolled away and was stolen by the disciples. So, secondly, how can you say that they were stolen? Because the linens that were wrapped around the body of Jesus, we can see, we can read that the linens were wrapped around the body with glue. Huh? Take note, with glue. Hindi po ordinary, not just an ordinary linen that was wrapped. It was with glue. So when Jesus was resurrected, the linens just parabang, rup, gumanon lang. Nawala yung katawan, and then the linens just, rup, as if it is still arranged. It is only the body that was gone, but the linens were properly arranged just like it was rolled around Jesus. And it needs scissor or it needs a knife before someone can take away the body. Amen? But the linens were, were really properly arranged. Amen? Secondly, the stone weighs two tons. That stone that was rolled into the hole, into that uh, entrance, weighs two tons. And it was sealed by the ring. It was sealed by the ring. Just like the, the king, when Daniel went into the, uh, into the lion's den, it was also sealed by the ring so that he cannot escape from the den of the lions. So, how can, how can these disciples huh, roll away that very heavy two-ton snow, stone without waking up the guards. <laughs> and the guards were all over. The Roman guards were all over. Joseph of Arimathea's guards is also there. Thirdly, now we will be going to the other side of the fence. In Matthew chapter 28, verse 1 to 10, This is the, the Matthew 28 verse, verse, verse 1 to 10 is when the two women went to the tomb. They went to the tomb and they were the first witnesses that the tomb was empty. These two women, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, the other Mary is the sister of Mary, the mother of Jesus. Those are the two persons who first witnessed that the tomb was empty. The stone was already rolled away because the angel rolled it away. Secondly, in Acts chapter 1, verse 13, when Jesus showed himself to the apostles for 40 days, after his resurrection, he showed himself to the apostles for 40 days. This Acts 1 to 3. In the first book, O Theophilus, I have dealt with all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day when he was taken up after he had given commands through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. He presented himself alive to them after his suffering by many proofs appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. So, next to the two women, he showed himself to the apostles, to his disciples. Amen? And then thirdly, after he showed himself to the apostles, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 6, First Corinthians 15, 6. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. So, take note. Huh? Just take note of that verse. I will be quoting that a little bit later. It will be a little bit funny when I quote that, uh, that verse a little bit later. So, those are the proofs. Those are the proofs that 
uh, under the first theory, the stone was rolled away theory. So the second theory is the wrong tomb theory. The wrong tomb theory. So do you think Joseph of Arimathea, who owns the tomb, entered the wrong tomb? Do you think he uh, na nalito siya, hindi niya alam na yung location, the, the location of his tomb? So that's the wrong tomb theory. The women, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the other Mary, do you think they entered the wrong tomb? That's why they didn't see the body inside the grave? And the disciples, did they also enter the wrong tomb? The Jews, the Roman soldiers, magkakamali ba yung mga yan? The angels, and the whole world. Did we all enter the wrong tomb? So, right then and there, okay, we don't believe on the wrong tomb theory. And lastly, is the hallucination theory. The hallucination theory. If we will be defining hallucination, huh, we have four definitions. First one is the false sensory perception in the absence of an actual external object. False sensory perception. Meaning to say, your senses uh, nagkamali. Nagkamali yung senses mo. Secondly, apparent perception of an external object when no such object is present. So, as if you saw something, you saw something there when actually nothing was there. That is the second meaning of hallucination. As if you saw something there, but it is, there is really nothing there. Thirdly, apparent act of vision for which there is no corresponding external object. Apparent act of vision. Nakamamiya, in, in the 2020 yung paningin mo. <laughs> Nakamamiya, 1 over 20 lang eh. Nagkamali ka ng tingin. You, you, you have a wrong mistake. You have mistaken. That's what they say, huh? And fourthly, results from purely psychological causes and not from the presence of an actual external object. Results from purely psychological causes. Baka daw medyo maluwag ang tornillo mo. Kaya nag ka. Maybe your, your, the screws on your head was a little bit loosened. That's why you're hallucinating. So that's the four meanings of hallucination. Now, there are no two hallucinations the same. No two hallucinations are the same because it is an internal thing. When you say hallucination, uh, I, I would ask you first, uh, of the four Definitions of hallucination, what is the common thing that you can find there? Let's see. Let's see if you're an observer. Absence of an external object. Actually, you just hallucinate. Maaaring kulang ka sa tulog, puyat ka, or lasing. You just lack sleep or you are drunk. That's why you are hallucinating. <laughs> or high on drugs. That's why you are hallucinating. There is actually no, nothing there that is hallucinating. So there are no, no two hallucinations are the same because it is an internal thing. Nasa loob lang po yun. It just arose from inside, not from the outside. That is hallucination. And if all the 500 believers had the same hallucination, then it would be a greater miracle than the resurrection. Imagine mo yung limandaang believer 
those 500 believers will be seeing the same thing that they saw Jesus. Imagine. It, it will be greater than the resurrection. <laughs> because there is no such thing as an external object in hallucinations. That's why it would be greater than the resurrection. That is really a miracle. Hindi po ni Lord yung limandaang tao, yung mga paningin ng limandaang tao. The Lord touched that, the eyes of the 500 people so that they will all be... <laughs> Can you imagine that? That's a real miracle. Uh, we, 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 we may laugh, but, but all these theories, they all came up. They all came up uh, at the same time when, when they want to discredit the resurrection. Maybe the, the, yung, yung nagpasimuno, the subjects here, yung, the leader who put up these theories wants to bring up a new religion. Maybe. Alam mo naman natin na naninira, di ba? They will, they will uh, say bad things. That religion, that belief is not good. Believe in what I am telling you. <laughs> That's the work of the devil. Those, these things, this uh, trying to discredit resurrection, these are all the work of the devil. If we will be believing in all of these theories, or in maybe one of these theories, eh, we, we ourselves have loose screws. Amen? Because it is very, very clear in the Word of God. It is very, very clear. And the Word of God is the authority. It's not the person who is the authority, but it is the Word of God, the authority. Not us. It is the Lord. He is the one that is in authority. Amen. And the resurrection, for me, nothing can compare with resurrection of, of our Savior. And we can all be proud. We can all say, Hey, my Lord, He's the only one who, who resurrected. Many were hoping, that, like the INC, the Iglesia Ni Cristo, they are still hoping that the, the, the founder will, will arise, will live again. They are hoping that. At meron pa pong iba. Hindi lang po yun. Uh, that's just an example. They are saying that they, 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 their leader is the one who, who will also live, who will resurrect. But look at Jesus. Three days, He rose again. That's why when Jesus said, in three days, I will rebuild this temple. That the Romans were saying, how can He rebuild all those structures in three days? <laughs> they were thinking that it is a building that Jesus was saying that He will rebuild the temple after three days, in three days. It is Jesus who will rise again after three days. Siguro, we are asking ourselves, why did it took three days? <laughs> why did it took three days before? Why did He choose three days? <laughs> Question, huh? Sa interaction na lang po natin mag-usapan. In the interaction, we will be, uh, or maybe in our Bible studies, if you want to, to bring up those topics, uh, we, we can talk about that. Amen? Amen. Going to 1 Peter, to close, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 to 5. Sorry, Nika. This is not on the... <laughs> We have First Peter chapter one verse three to five. There you go. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, 
who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. Very powerful verses. Let's, let's have this verse as one of our life verses because this should be one, one group of verses that, that we should be always in our hearts, memorize as much as possible. Because what, what is in there? Our living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. That is our living hope. Jesus Christ being our Lord and Savior has risen from the dead. Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this very wonderful event, Lord, that happened. Thank you so much, Lord, for giving up your life, Father God, on the cross. Thank you so much, Lord, because you truly loved us, Father. You loved the world. That's why you gave your only begotten Son to save us, Father. And to have our relationship reconciled back to you, Lord. Our broken relationship, Father, when we have all turned into sin, Father. We have all turned into our own wicked ways, Lord. Lord, patawarin na po kami. Forgive us, Father God. And Lord, may, may this day, Lord, once again bring us close to you, Father. May we wake up. Father God, from a deep sleep, from a deep, from a slumber, Father God, may we wake up, Lord, and and never to go again to this to this path, Father. Lord, bring us back into the right path, Lord. Bring us back whatever Your will is in our lives, Father, and use us, Lord. Use us mightily for Your ministry, for Your glory and honor, Father. Thank you, Lord, for we have this living hope. We have, we have these promises, Lord, living promises from your word. Thank you, Lord. We just want to celebrate this very wonderful event that we have a risen Lord, a living God right here in our hearts. We bless you and we give glory to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.